Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We are happy that you're back and we are thrilled to support you to get one step closer to achieving your goal as a certified nurse educator. In this snapshot, we will be focusing on the educational learning theory, constructivism. We are continuing to talk and focus on this specific content area because we know it can be a large gap area for many of our nurse educator colleagues. As a reminder, you wanna make sure that you print out that study worksheet, which you can find here in the description section so that you have a very focused plan for our time together today and as you debrief and reflect on the content that you will need to study to close your knowledge gaps related to the concepts that we will discuss today. You also have access with a discount code um, for 2023 monthly boot camp. All right, so we will kick off in January. We meet every single month for about an hour. In 2023, we are adding some exciting new content and practice test questions to make sure that you're doing a really good job of evaluating your learning, assessing your knowledge gaps, and then building out that solid plan to help you close those knowledge gaps. That's the benefit of joining the monthly boot camp. And also you are connecting with a group of like-minded nurse educator colleagues to make sure that you all are staying on track and that you're showing up for each other. The sessions are recorded, so if you have a conflict, the good news is you won't miss a thing. You can always email us questions in advance or even after you review the episode to make sure that you are closing your knowledge gaps, or if there are any muddy points out there, we want to make sure that we clarify any questions that you may have. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our content. If you have not already purchased your resources, you want to make sure you do that um, as soon as possible. That's going to help make sure that you are reviewing the content that's listed out in Billings and Halstead 6th edition or Dr. Caputi's review book. We're looking at Appendix A. We're focusing on chapter and that's in Dr. Caputi's review book. Also, of course, chapter one, facilitation of learning. And in chapter 14, specifically table 14.1 in Billings and Halstead teaching and nursing 6th edition. All right, so that's where we're pulling all of our content. So let's go ahead and jump in. Specifically, when we talk about learning theory, remember that the tenet and really the underpinning associated with learning theory is to connect the dots for our students between concepts and the teaching strategies that we are using in our classroom, as well as the evaluation strategies. That is our goal. That is the purpose of learning theory. And as we have been doing in every single snapshot related to educational learning theory, we like to start with a practice test question and then we'll review content and then we'll close out by reviewing the correct answer and the rationale as to why the correct answer was the chosen one. Okay, so here we go. Practice question states, constructivism learning theory allows the student to take an active role in learning. A student is struggling to understand sterile technique. Which teaching strategy would align with applying this learning theory? So thinking about the tenets, the concepts associated with constructivism learning theory, which of these four choices are most aligned with that theorist and the concepts associated with it? All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on. If you want to pause the video and come back, that's perfectly fine. Um, and then you can come back and kind of review the content as it relates to the choice that you made and compare it to the correct choice. First, we're going to start with learning. So what does the literature say about constructivism? There are three key points that we're going to focus on, and there's additional content in the resources we just described. And if you're on the journey to, to see an ECL, don't, you don't have to be pressured to purchase Dr. Caputi's book. Just know that Billings and Halstead is the primary resource we're using for all of our learning theory review. Um, so three concepts and specific points that we want to align with constructivism learning theory. First is learning occurs through experience. Second, just remember that this specific learning theory is a branch or a sub a subcategory of cognitivism. And then thirdly, it, remembering that individuals are going to learn to learn as they are learning. Okay, it's a continuous process. When we talk about lifelong learning, that is under the tenets of constructivism. 
Second category of these teaching strategies, remembering that we are a facilitator, right? The teacher in our teaching is a facilitation of knowledge and that learners are responsible for their own learning. We want to engage in these high impact, um, active engagement teaching strategies. However, the specific tenet associated with constructivism is that the learner is responsible, right? They are to move past the learning, the structured learning experience into that unstructured learning opportunity where they are identifying what resources do I need to help me better understand these concepts? Are there additional practice hours that I need to spend in the skills lab to ensure that I am following the steps in the sterile technique process, that I am receiving feedback from my lab faculty so that I, as the learner, can practice and follow those evidence-based teaching steps in the process to ensure that I am maintaining sterility. That's just one example. And then that third category, what are the evaluation methods that are associated with constructivism? Team-based activities and group projects. Because again, remember that individuals and these learners learn as they are learning. They learn as much from their mistakes as they do from the times that they have made the right choices about the practice, the nursing practices that they are going to follow. The clinical experiences really connect very strongly to constructivist learning theory because students are able to put the pieces of the puzzle together, all right? And that is our job and our responsibility. As a facilitator of learning, we are giving students continuous feedback about what they're doing well, giving them feedback about changes that they need to make to ensure that they are following evidence-based practices in the decisions that they are making every single time that they are having a clinical experience. All right, so let's take a look at our practice question and let's see how you did. All right, so we have four choices. Again, the question is tied to a student that is struggling to understand sterile techniques. So when we think about constructivism and constructive learning theory, what are some steps that we could take to better help them learn? A is teaching sterile technique using recorded lecture. B is integrating reflective journals as a required assignment. C is developing more role play activities to increase engagement. And D is assign individual practice time in skills and sim lab. All right, so if you chose B, integrating reflective journals as a required assignment, you are correct. This is going to allow the student, because remember they learn as they go, they are going to think about what did their, what were their practice decisions that day? What helped them or informed them about what choices they were gonna make as it relates to the patient care delivery that they provided that day, all right? And remember too that as facilitators of the learning process, we are involved in giving students that continuous feedback, all right? So if you had a question about why the other choices were not correct. Let's talk about it. A, teaching sterile technique using recorded lecture. Remember, we facilitate learning. There's no additional facilitation of learning associated with the recorded lecture. C, developing more role play activities to increase engagement. That may certainly support student learning. However, remember that active role in learning is really the core foundation of constructivism. And we are indeed developing additional content to help support bridging the gaps in knowledge, but we don't know if role play activities will help the student or not, right? So we want to allow the student to reflect on their clinical practices. And then that's usually when students are more likely following constructivism learning theory to speak up, to reach out, to collaborate and to connect with their faculty about what their additional learning needs are. And then D, assigning individual practice time. Again, we want to engage in those group learning experiences, right? That, those are the ones that are strongly tied to constructivism learning theory. All right, so hopefully this snapshot has helped you close your knowledge gaps as you move forward on your journey. As always, you can reach out to us. Our email is info at drsellerseducate.com. 
or you can head over to our website and that's where you're going to see a lot of resources, many resources, depending on where you are in your journey. We have learning guides available. We also have the self-paced courses available and also our live review. We have a live review every single month and we will be launching and making our formal announcement about our summer series that will be in person in North Carolina. So more to come on that. But until next time, we hope that you have enjoyed the snapshot and we will see you next time. Have a great one, everybody.